Hi, I'd like to show you how to create a, a custom drum rack in Ableton from a, a VST plugin. In this case, it's the Garrett and Jazz VST, uh, the Jazz and Big Band, and I have a classic jazz drum kit uh, loaded here, as you can hear. Basically what I want to do is create a drum rack from some of the sounds uh, of this uh, plugin uh, and this will allow me to uh, create a custom drum rack just like the ones that are available uh, by default in Ableton Live. Let me quickly find one. Okay, here's a drum kit. I'm just going to drag. Let's drag this one over here and wait for it to load. There it is. Okay, so here you have your basic drum kit with a kick, snare, tom, hi hat. Uh, for this tutorial, I'm not going to do all of them, I'm just going to do some of the basics like the kick, the snare, and the hi hat, and maybe a cymbal. Uh, see how far uh, I can get. So, uh, just listen to what it sounds like, although that doesn't really matter. So, back to this. What I'm gonna do uh, is record some of the sounds that I want and I'm gonna record them uh, as MIDI and then I'm gonna convert them into WAV files and uh, I'll be using those WAV files uh, to create my drum rack. So I've already uh, put some basic stuff in here, a cymbal and a hi-hat, so you can quickly hear what it sounds like. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna grab the pieces of the kit that I want, drop them in here, let me turn that off, uh, well let's start with the hi-hat, so this is the, actually the uh, foot pedal of the hi-hat, and I'm gonna record those at two velocities, one is the loudest and the other one is slightly lower volume. Uh, that's big 90. Uh, why am I doing this? Well, I want to mix those two sounds and create one sound out of it. And the, the first one is will be used for the lower velocities and uh, the other one will be mixed uh, into this sound at the, at the higher volumes. Close this for now. So what I do here is I have a. I'm gonna delete that. Okay. So I have the hi hat here on beat one and three. And now I freeze this track. And what Ableton does is in the background it has now created a wave file uh, of this uh, MIDI track and. To show you this, I'm now holding down the control key and I'm just gonna drag this into an audio track like that. And as you can see here, uh, I now have a copy of my MIDI track but as audio. So if I stop this and play this, you'll hear the exact same thing. The first one is the low volume, this is the high volume. Let me stop that. I created two bars, but I actually only need one, so I'm gonna trim this down to one bar like that. Crop sample, and there you have it. Let's do it again. So the next thing I want to do is slice this wave file 
into two WAV files. So I have one WAV file for the silent hi-hat and the other one for the louder uh, hi-hat. Uh, I'm gonna. Uh, there's a few ways you can do this. I'm gonna show you both ways. Uh, the first one is uh, in, in Ableton itself, and the other one is using uh, an, ex an external sound editor. So first, what I'm gonna do is add a marker here. Uh, so I now I'm gonna slice this into a new MIDI track, and Ableton is gonna take care of everything for me. So I just uh, let's first rename this so I actually know what this is. I had pedal. Okay. So right click, uh, slice to new MIDI track. There it is. Okay. I have a few options here. The default warp marker. So create one slice per warp marker. I, I have two markers. There's one here one here so and it tells me that it will create two slices which is exactly what I want so I just click OK and there I have it uh, what it actually did now is it created a new simpler instrument with uh, both slices already in it which is more or less what I'm after but not completely because I want to combine these two with these uh, two WAV files uh, into one and you can do it this way but it's a bit uh, well complicated um, basically this is a simpler but you can transform that into a sampler which is what we will be using so let's be quickly do that and then I'll show you another way of doing it so now this is a sampler I click on zone and I see there's a slice here and what I actually want to achieve is get the second slice underneath uh, the first one so that this chain will actually consist of two uh, wave files so I can now find this one in the browser so zone in browser yeah, it's already there there you go and Sorry. Now I open this one. I track the sample in here. There you go. So it's the same WAV file. I'm gonna delete that one. No longer need it. And now I just need to trim this like so. So basically, I now have uh, two sounds in one chain which is exactly what I want. Downside of this is that well this isn't really very convenient to work with uh, if you need to actually match the exact beginning of the of the wave file it's not that handy to work with so I actually prefer using um, an external editor which uh, in my case is uh, Adobe Audition so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go just gonna delete this for now so I have the WAV file here I can right click on it and tell me manage sample file and it opens this thing here which is similar as uh, the browser here except that I cannot select here to edit the file which is what I want to do so let's close that 